Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to write a strength power program using RPE. So in this video, we're gonna use this example of a basketball preseason program, and I specifically added both percent one rep max and RPE to this program, so that way you can see how both are done. This has really helped me to understand program design from a percent one rep max perspective or a RPE perspective, and to understand the pros and cons of each. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, before we dive into an example, let's clear up why we might use RPE and what RPE is. So RPE in the context of lifting and resistance training programs is rating of perceived exertion, and it's typically on a one to 10 scale. Any set that we do, we can quantify it as a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 RPE based on how intense it was. And here's a chart from Barbell Rehab, shout out to Michael Mash and the stuff that he's doing, link in the description below to his work. But this chart is basically explaining what, for example, a seven RPE looks like in terms of number of reps left in the tank. So for example, if you use your 10 rep max load and you do seven reps, then you could have done three more. That would put you at about a seven out of 10 RPE. If you're using your 10 rep max load, but doing nine reps, then you did a nine RPE because you could have done one more. Your warm-up sets, for example, are typically at that five to six RPE range as you're just gradually building up intensity. Your working sets are usually somewhere between six and nine, and that'll vary week to week based on the goal and the phase of training that you're in. Now you might be wondering, why would you program based on RPE instead of just assigning load, for example, doing three sets of eight at 75% one rep max? Why instead might you choose to do three sets of eight at seven and a half RPE? And one of the main benefits of programming with RPE is that we're doing what's called auto-regulation. And really this is just a fancy term for saying that we can modify the load within the training session rather than always using a prescribed load that we determined maybe weeks ago. So the rationale here is that the internal load of the athlete is what they're experiencing, whereas the external load might be the weight on the bar. And we know that external loads affect people differently. If you put, for example, 225 pounds of external load on a barbell, any individual is going to experience that load in a different way. Some people that might be way too heavy and they're gonna be overtraining from that. Other people are gonna be undertraining from that stimulus. So the idea of using internal load is that for certain people, we can more accurately gauge the intensity of a stimulus on, for example, one certain week of training by assigning an RPE than we can for prescribing a specific load. For example, if it's an intro week for a strength block of training and we prescribe a seven RPE, then we know going into the session, they're not gonna burn themselves out. If we use an old training max, or if we use a percentage that's inappropriate, we might assign too much load, and if the lifter just goes in and does that, they might be burning themselves out week one and not leaving room to progress week two, three, four. I'm not saying that one is right or wrong. We're gonna actually evaluate the research and see who RPE-based programming is best for in a second, but I just wanna make the case for using internal load and RPE versus assigning external load. All right, so we're gonna look at two quotes from this research article, application of repetitions in reserve-based rating of perceived exertion scale for resistance training. So this study is from some really well-known researchers and it uses RPE or RIR, reps in reserve. Before we dive into that, we have to explain reps in reserve. If we have, for example, a seven out of 10 RPE, that roughly corresponds to a three reps in reserve. Because if we're seven out of 10, we could have done three more and that means we would have three repetitions in reserve. Eight RPE typically means that we have about two left in the tank or two repetitions in reserve. So eight equals two, seven equals three, that's what we're getting at. All right, so knowing that, who is the RPE slash RIR method good for? And within this research article, it says, Zordo et al found substantial differences between novice and experienced squatters which have important implications for the use of this scale. This is just one sentence that summarizes the overall point that more advanced lifters are more accurate in their assessment of RPE or RIR. Lifters with significant lifting experience can more accurately gauge how many repetitions they had left in the tank or how difficult a set was. This is particularly true of strength athletes. Another quote reads, 
The ability to complete maximal lifts at very slow speeds can be viewed as a sign of neuromuscular efficiency with regard to maximal strength and indicative of an experienced lifter. So particularly for strength athletes who are used to grinding through really heavy reps, they can very accurately assess internal load and very accurately determine if a set was 7, 8, 9 RPE. Beginner lifters, by contrast, may do better with prescription of load based on one rep max, at least for a time period, until they get a really good feel for what their internal load is and how many they actually could have done. All right, so knowing all this and who can benefit from each type of programming, we can now go into this example and see how we program based on percent one rep max versus how we program based on RPE. Before we dive into this example, I do want to mention my new course, Program Design 101. If you are interested in learning about program design and how to write great strength programs for your athletes and see exactly how I do it step by step, see all of my templates and examples and a full summary of the current literature, you can take my new course, Program Design 101. Program Design 101 is a CEU approved course that will help you write great programs for your athletes. If you're interested in learning more, go ahead and click the link in the description below or head to themovementsystem.com. All right, so now let's dive into this strength power basketball program and talk about how we can program with percent or with RPE. I will say for this example, I've put both the percent and the RPE from a learning perspective, but typically you're only gonna pick one. If for example, you decide to assign percent one at max, then you can leave the RPE column blank and have the athlete fill out that RPE. Or if you decide to assign RPE, you could then have the athlete fill out what weight they used to get that RPE. For learning purposes, I've put both the percent one rep max and the RPE in this program so that you can see roughly how they correspond. All right, so I wanna start with talking about exercise C1 here, which is our barbell back squat. It's programmed at 85% one rep max or roughly an 8.5 RPE. This is our most intense exercise of this week of training. And I wanna talk about how I chose that percent one rep max or that RPE. So first, for deciding what percent one rep max to assign for that four sets of four, I had to decide, do I want this to be a strength or a power exercise? This is the combined strength power program. So based on the percent that I chose, I made this one a strength-based exercise. The way that I know that is by looking at this chart. This chart just shows us at any given percent of one rep max, how many reps could we do? So for example, at 90% one rep max, the most number of reps that we could do is four. By contrast, at 80% one rep max, the most number of reps that we could do is eight. Another way to say that is that our four rep max load is 90% of our one rep max load. Try not to overthink it, but what we're saying here is that the most that we could load the barbell and still complete four reps is 90%. I chose 85% for week one of this program. Over week two, three, four, which you can't see here, I'm probably gonna bump that 85 to maybe 87, 88, or even 90% as we get towards the end of this block of training. And by loading in that 85 to 90% range, we're gonna be near maximal intensity and very slow grinding strength-based reps. If I was to program that four sets of four for power, which I could have done if this was just, for example, a purely power program, I would have probably used closer to an eight rep max load or closer to 80%. So maybe week one through four, I went from 76 to 82%, for example, rather than going from 85 to 90% in this block of training. And that's just one example here of one exercise programmed for strength with 85% one rep max. Now we wanna move on to thinking about how do I assign RPE for this exercise? At an 85% one rep max load, the athlete probably could do five to six reps. Because of that, if they're doing four sets of four, they're gonna roughly leave one to two reps in the tank. So we're gonna be somewhere between that eight and nine RPE range, so I just went with eight and a half for this exercise. So to get a strength stimulus on the barbell back squat exercise for four sets of four, you can either make the choice to program, for example, 85% one rep max or eight and a half RPE, and either of those options could get you a good result depending on the athlete you're working with. Again, if you have a beginner, you might just choose to do four sets of four at 85% and assign that load as an external load. 
If you're working with an intermediate to advanced athlete, maybe you choose to do four sets of four at eight and a half RPE and let them assign the load. There are more options with advanced athletes like wave loading or RPE ranges, but we're not gonna get into that in this video. And then moving down to our accessory movements, it's really up to you if you want to assign RPE for those. You definitely can. For example, I added an eight RPE for our bent over row, but you don't have to. It's really up to you in your programming decision there. All right, circling back to the push jerk, and this is an interesting movement because it's power-based. So we're using a 75% one rep max load, which you could do for 10 reps, but we're only gonna do for six reps. This is gonna allow for faster bar speed and actually maximize the intent of power for this exercise. The RPE that I put here is six. You could make the justification for sure that the faster bar speed is gonna bring that up to maybe a seven or a seven and a half but you wanna make sure that you're not putting a really high RPE and then having athletes load the movement too heavy. So you really wanna note one way or another or communicate to your athletes that power-based exercises should be high intent, high bar speed without necessarily using too much load. All right, and then moving into day two here, we have our depth jump and our medicine ball throw. Those are not given an RPE value. Again, we're just trying to maximize bar speed here. We're probably gonna use a standard medicine ball, maybe a 10, 12, 14 pound ball, depending on the type of jump throw that we're doing. But then moving into our trap bar deadlift, here's where it gets interesting because we're trying to provide a strength slash power stimulus in the preseason here. I think the trap bar deadlift is a really good movement for basketball players in this strength power preseason phase. It replicates the upright trunk of like getting a rebound and vertical jumping, a little bit more so than a standard barbell where you have to go around the knees. We're gonna load this at 85% one rep max. You definitely could justify going lower, like 82 to 84, and maybe in the late preseason you do that as you shift more towards power. But my decision here early preseason for this athlete is more on the strength side of that strength power stimulus with 85% load, four sets of four, with about an eight RPE. And then lastly, I wanna cover the Bulgarian split squat, which is programmed for three sets of five with an eight rep max load. And what that means is that we're gonna do whatever we could do for eight. So maybe we tested them in the last block of training, we got their eight rep max load, and that's the load we're gonna do, but for three sets of five. Because we're doing five reps in an eight rep max load, that's three reps left in the tank, or roughly a seven RPE. All right, if you're soaking in all this free information and really enjoying it, one, smash that like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and then also consider checking out Program Design 101. If you're enjoying all the free content, then you'll really get a benefit to Program Design 101, which I've put together over the course of basically a year. It summarizes tons of research in a really organized and efficient way, so that way you get eight hours of continuing education credit towards renewing your CSCS, as well as the benefit of seeing all the current research on hypertrophy, strength, power, and endurance summarized into one place and applied and this is a really important part of my course and what makes it different, is that I apply that information directly and show you examples. And then also give you the templates and give you the assignment so that way you can do it for your athletes. At the end of the course, you'll have a portfolio of a strength program, a hypertrophy program, a power and plyometric program, and an endurance program for the athletes that you work with. My goal for this course is that it's immediately beneficial to you and to your athletes. It's not just a passive CEU course where you just watch some videos. It's active, you're learning, and you're getting something tangible to take away. Whether that portfolio of programs and that experience helps you nail a job interview and get your dream job, or if it helps you work with that elite level athlete that you haven't had the confidence and knowledge to program for yet, I want Program Design 101 to be impactful for you and your athletes. As you can tell, I'm really excited about it. I hope it reaches the right people and benefits them, and if that's you, that's great. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.